gentlemen, how to change your life in 2024. See, pe- people underestimate how much shit you can actually accomplish in a year. Literally even, even less than a year. It could take eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is. You can do so much stuff in a year. It is literally incredible. You could change your entire reality this year. And I'm going to go through exact steps that I want to get there and the stuff that you're going to do to get there. But you have to freaking watch the whole video. If you skip some pieces, like you cannot have the life-changing circumstances without doing all of these things. So freaking watch a whole video or a year from now, you're going you're gonna to be watching the same stuff in the same spot, right? So let's get into this. So my story, right? What are my credentials? So when I was 18, I started smoking weed every single day. So I smoked weed every single day for four years of my life, like w- without missing. I, I was, if I was consistent at one thing, it, it was getting baked. So for four years, I just got absolutely fried. I drink alcohol, you know, booze really hard Thursday through Sunday. That was just how it was. I got shit faced. Um, Didn't go to the gym. I just kind of became like this like body. That was it. You know, I wasn't like in shape. I I was just like this fucking body that was there. Not a good look. Terrible anxiety. Hated my freaking life. So I was like, you know what? Screw this. Drop out of college. Right. When I got out of college, realized I had sixty two thousand dollars worth of debt. So I thought my parents were paying school like I thought they were paying for my college. To be honest, I applied for a credit card, got denied. And I was like, why did I get denied? And I look and I had sixty two thousand dollars worth of debt. That's how I found out I was paying for school. So after I dropped out of school, I had to make ends meet. I worked in a factory for 12 hours a day. Right. So your boy would wake up at 4 30. I'd go into work at 5 17 a.m. I'd get out at 5 30 p.m. So I play video games from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Just like being a freaking scrub, not doing shit with my life. And I hated it. Like I remember I came home from work dump one day, went to my dad. He sees me. He starts crying. My dad never cries. He's like, Son, what's wrong? I was like, dude, I hate my life and I can't do this anymore. Something's got to change. Right. So the come up, right? I got in shape, traveled to three countries in under a month, went to, what was it? The UK, Switzerland, Spain, also went to Portugal and Canada, but those are just flights there. So bought a new car, which is pretty cool. Um, got a couple watches, which was sweet. Moved to California. I got to live in just freaking awesome houses in Cali. Um, moved to Florida as well. Made $227,000 in 10 months, right? So that this, is, this was the big key for me, right? Is to get the life-changing money because I literally went from having $1,000 in my account to making you know, over 220 grand in less than 10 months. So how do you do it, right? That's, that's the million-dollar question. So I'm going to break it down because it's simple. It's very, very freaking simple. It's hard, but it's simple. And simple people can understand. So the first thing is your actions. Can you show up daily? What are you willing to do? Like a lot of times people talk about these business plans, these ideas, all this shit, but it's going to come down to what you're willing to do. Like point blank. That's it, right? Jesse Itzler, he's a runner, entrepreneur, great freaking dude. You should watch his stuff. He always talks about this. You know, what are you willing to do? That's going to determine if a business succeeds or fails, right? Number two is your mindset. You are the enemy. Right. You know, how many times have you talked to some some person and you're like, oh, I've been going to the gym consistently like, oh, dude, I can never go to the gym like X, Y, Z. They just disqualify themselves. You don't want to freaking be this guy. You are the worst enemy. Number three is the boat is more important than how hard you row. Like, right. This is Warren Buffett stuff. Just changing up the quote a bit. We'll get into that, too. And then number four is your environment. You need to remove the negatives and add the positive. You got to cut the freaking weight at your ankles to fly, dude. We'll get further into this. So inaction is a slow death, Marcus Aurelius. So a lot of times in trying to find your identity, you got to eliminate stuff before you add it, right? So shit to eliminate that's just holding you back right away is booze, weed, like just chasing freaking just girls, going out, getting shit faced, sleeping at girls' cribs, just consistently chasing ass when, when you provide no value is killing you. And then video games. Like all this shit right here is holding you back. And the way I'm going to prove it to you right now, if I were to ask you, 
your dream self? Like what is the, the million dollar version of you look like? Does he play fucking video games? No, fuck no. Right. Is he, is he getting fucking stoned all the time? Is he getting shit face drunk? Is he chasing just these low, low quality women around town, just being a village bicycle? No, he's not doing this shit. And I'm not saying you can't do these things later. Like, dude, I drank when I went home for the holidays. I drank. Like, I'm not going to lie, but you got to know when and where. And if you're at this fucking point, now is not the time to be doing any of these things, dude, because they take your focus and focus or lack thereof is the reason you are where you are. Right. So the gym is your new best friend. You got to freaking work on yourself. Right. That is, that is point blank. The most important thing is you got to work on yourself. So one thing that helped me out is get a gym, bro. Like, dude, just reach out to someone who goes to the gym. Be like, yo, can I lift with you or can I have your program? Can we go at the same time? We don't have to lift together. Do whatever you got to do. Get your ass in the gym because, dude, not being in shape is crippling. It fucking sucks. And like, I've been to the point where I look so shitty that I was scared to go to the gym and realize no one gives a shit. Like when you walk into the gym, no one cares. It's to the point now when I go to the gym and I see someone, you know, who's just starting their journey in the gym. I'm like, fuck yeah. That guy's a fucking savage. He's coming in here. He's lacing them up. He's trying to get in shape. Like I respect that shit. So don't, don't be embarrassed. Don't be worrying about, you know, fear of judgment, all that shit. It's stupid. Right. Next thing is you're a reader now. People, sp we spend our whole lives, like, get a load of this, dude. We spend our whole lives getting educated, like our whole lives, right? You know, preschool, grade school, uh, middle school, high school, college, right? All this shit. We pay thousands, hundreds of thousands for all this shit. But then, like, after, or if we drop out, people, ju people just stop. They just stop learning. And we were told this phrase when we were young the more you learn, the more you earn. That shit's true. Not in the wage cage and the nine to five route, but in business, it's true. So you are now a reader. Reading books that are going to change your paradigm is priceless, dude. You can literally read a book about everything a dude learned in life. You can, you can just siphon his knowledge. It, it, I mean, it's genius. So books that help me, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, this completely changed my paradigm as to how I thought about money in my career. Uh, second book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, phenomenal book. It's going to change your mindset on, you know, faith, believing in yourself, the whole nine is quality book. And then the third one is Atomic Habits. So this is just going to give you systems to where you're not relying on willpower as much to, you know, have good habits. You can set up systems to make life a little bit easier. And then another one is the consumer versus, per, excuse me, bleh, the consumer versus producer mindset. So this is a huge problem in society. So many people are just like consumers and that's not where the money is. Like literally if you're scrolling through freaking TikTok, through Instagram, porn, all this shit, they're making money off you. Like, dude, you are, you're, you're the horse and, and they got the carrot. They're, they're just, you know, they're, they're getting forward because of you. So you got to change your mindset. And I'm not saying everything like me personally, I'm still a consumer. I still watch good YouTube videos because they provide value right? That that gets me further in life. I'm not saying everything, but just get rid of this shit. Don't be, don't be scrolling through looking at ass on Instagram. Like that, that's not going to help you watch stuff. That's actually going to provide value in your life and then switch to a producer mindset. Like how can I make money? How can I make content? All this stuff. Cause producer, this is where the freaking money is. And we'll get further into this in a sec. And then start looking for a way out because the universe will help you. So this philosophy comes from a book called The Alchemist, best fiction, best fiction book of all time. And essentially what it talks about is when we chase our purpose, the universe conspires to assist us. And this is real shit, 100%, because when you start looking for a way out, I don't care what you believe in, God, the universe, the creator, whatever, something helps you out. Something gives you tips gives you a hunch, gives you intuition. The universe will conspire. It's just, you need to start looking. If you're the good dude who's just twiddling his freaking thumbs all day, shit ain't gonna happen, right? Nothing changes unless something changes. All right, so the man who says he can and cannot are both right. 
So the people who you look up to don't worship them, chase them. Like I see this shit all the time, dude. Like one of my buddies, dude's a multimillionaire, right? Absolute dog in sales. And I always hear people to be like, oh, well, he's him. I can't be him. He's him. Just like worshiping, putting on a pedestal, like all this stuff. And when I first got into business in sales, it wasn't like that. Like I was like, dude, this guy's really freaking good. But to me, I was like, dude, why don't I just do the same thing? Like we bleed the same color blood. We are both freaking human. Why can't I do the same shit? Like he's human. That's the way you got to think is look at these people. Honestly, like lunch, be competitive. Be like, dude, this guy did this. I'm going to go for that too. I'm going to do it too. Because eventually at some point, no one did what he did. So you just got to look at it like that. Like look at it like competition. Life is a game of competition. It is player versus player. Right. The next thing is set big goals. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people come into business and they're like, all right, I want to make eight grand a month. Right. I want to make a hundred grand a year. Cool. They make seventy thousand dollars a year. Right. Then you have people, they're like, All right, I want to make a quarter million a year. And then they make two hundred K. Just just set the goal high because if you miss, at least the number's higher. Like the way I view it is you know, setting goals, it's like a lottery ticket, right? You might hit them, you might not. That shit's up to you. But why not just go for the biggest ticket possible? Like, why not? And this is a problem so many people make is set big goals because it's going to make you do big shit to achieve it. Like, you're not, you're not going to be smoking weed, getting baked on the weekend if you want to make a million dollars a year. Like, that, that's just what it takes, right? So your actions will build your confidence. So I've seen this time and time again where someone's just delusionally confident. And honestly, it's fake. Right. It's, it's like fake confidence. Right. Like they think they're him, but they're freaking not because they're a bum. They don't do the right shit. You know, they're smoking weed, playing video games, staying up late, not working out, eating like shit. Like it's not real confidence. But when you're the guy who's been putting in the work behind the scenes, like freaking lifting, running, reading, meditating, doing all that shit, that's real confidence. Like people can feel that shit. So. Do the right shit and confidence is going to come. It's it's not created, dude. Like it takes time. And confident, true confidence comes from your actions, right? So switch the mentality from the victim to the hero. This is something I've struggled with for the longest time. This idea where it's like, oh, this shit, you know, all this happened to me, right? Like I had to go to school because the system, right? I had to get 62K worth of debt because the system, right? Like all this stuff. And I see this all the time where people are like, oh, you know, I come from poverty. My family didn't make a ton of money, right? And I, I have sympathy for that. Like I can feel that, you know, people who didn't grow up, parents, without a mom, without a dad, all this stuff. But the people who I see that actually perform at the highest levels, they use that to their advantage instead of their disadvantage. They realize that saying, you know, growing up without parents, not making any money, like on food stamps, whatever it is. You know, it's why I am where I am today. But the other people, the people who actually freaking win, they say, all that happened, right? I grew up poor. I grew up without a dad, all this shit. That's why I'm a millionaire. They use it to beat the odds. Because if you believe that, you know, growing up poor, growing up without a dad, you know, growing up in an abusive home, like all this shit, it doesn't help you. It could very well be the reason why where you are today is because of those things. But if you believe it, it serves you nothing. You can't do anything about it. So just say, you know, despite all the shit that went on in my life, I'm going to be the freaking hero. And I'm going to be the guy in my family who make, who gets us out. Be the freaking hero. Stop being the victim. Failure is a stepping stone to success. It's actually stepping stones because there's going to be many failures. Dude, when I started in sales, I would literally get my face kicked in. I would go out there and just get absolutely shit on for days, weeks, months. But eventually it gets to the point where there's lessons and failures, right? Like, why did this guy say no? Why did he give me that objection? Was it my body language? Was it my tonality? Was it my eye contact? Was it my word tracks, my scripts? And you start to learn. Failure is, it is literally a necessary teacher, dude, because you will not just snap your freaking fingers and make a million dollars. No, you're going to have to go through a bunch of freaking shit in life and it's going to harden you. It's going to make you more resilient, make you smarter, tougher. All this shit inform you into the person you need to be to make the money you want. Like the guy who I'm talking to today isn't going to be the same guy that makes millions. 
He's going to change. He's going to develop, right? So faith in your ability to win supported by action. You got to have a deep down belief, dude, like plain and simple. When I moved out to California, I told everyone when they'd ask, they'd be like, oh, you know, are you nervous? All this stuff. I was like, yeah, dude, I'm nervous as hell, but I guarantee I do it. I told my mom, I was like, mom, I guarantee I make over $80,000 or I'll go back to school. I gave myself an ultimatum, all this shit, bet on yourself and just control the actions. If you do the right stuff, that's where confidence comes from. Now, I know some people, they just have, you know, naturally high confidence. Other people create it. Like, dude, I literally know a guy, he was an absolute workhorse, the physical embodiment of commitment. And that's how he creates his confidence. Just, just through doing the freaking dirty work. So you can do the same stuff, same exact stuff, right? So as we said earlier, it's not how hard you row, but it's more important what boat you're in by Warren Buffett. 100% true. Nine to five, your income is set, right? Little boss man, he's like, yo, Jimmy, you make 75K a year. That's it. You can work some OT, you know, we'll give you time and a half, whatever. But your income is set. There's a limit on it. Right now in 1099, which is, you know, business, self-employment, independent contractor, you set the income. Now, this goes back to mindset. And it's, it's something you guys got to understand. When you're nine to five, people say, oh, that's safe. Right. You got job security, all this stuff, all this beautiful stuff. You got job security. Right. But then when you want to start your own business and bet on yourself where you're in control. Nah, man, that's risky. How many of you have heard that? Countless times, right? Ass freaking backwards. Ass backwards. There's no real job security in the nine to five. You think when money gets tight, profits low, who do you think is going to go? You. That's who they'll fire. They need to make money. There is no job security because the security is outside yourself. In 1099, you're driving the ship, dude. If it sinks or if it freaking goes to the other coast, that is on you. That's true security. Right. So sales is how the world runs. Huge misconception here that, you know, you don't need to sell shit. Absolute lie. If you ever asked a girl out, that's sales. If you ever had a girlfriend, sales. You literally sold her on why she should be with you. If you ever convinced your friends to go out to eat, go to a bar, whatever it is, that is sales. You convince them to get to the outcome that you wish would occur. That is sales. So you might as well get paid for it. All sales is, is just convincing someone to do something that you think is best for them. That's it. As long as you're selling real, you know, authentic, good stuff and not just scamming people. Right. So as far as sales go, big ticket will always pay better. Right. Like, dude, don't be the guy selling shoe cleaning at the mall and bring home 30 bucks a day. Like sell something freaking big because it pays better. But realize that this is the thing here is calculate per hour pay. Right. Like if I'm in real estate and let's say I make 30 grand per house. Right. But it takes me freaking a thousand hours to do all the paperwork, the escrow, the whole nine to make that money. And my per hour pay is just shit. It's probably not a good idea. Right. But if it's something like, you know, solar, let's say insurance, stuff like that, where your per hour pay is high, it's worth it. Because you can control, you know, hey, if I work for 20 hours or 40 hours, or let's say you just do like 60 hours a week and you make nine grand, do the math. That's worth it. So you got to find the per hour pay. Network is net worth. Getting around the right people is probably the biggest reason why I've succeeded in life. And what I mean by that is, you are the people you surround yourself with. So if you're with alcoholics and people who smoke weed all day, I guarantee you're the same person. Plain and simple. You know, if you're with people who have no fucking ambition, same person. And, you know, there's differences in life. It is what it is. But you got to get around the right people if you want to freaking win. Like you, you have to be around the, the right people. Otherwise, they'll be like, oh, dude, you know, he's trying to get in shape. Like, fuck this guy. No, dude, fuck them. Like, just, just remove them. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be rude. But that's just the way life fucking is. Because some people, they just want to see, they want to see you do good, just not better than them. Get the fuck away from those people. Right? Next thing, get a mentor. Now, this, this is where I fucked up. It doesn't have to be Elon Musk. 
Like I remember I'd be DMing like literally dudes worth like $800 million. And I just be DMing. I'm like, Hey man, um, I'm Nate. I'm just getting into business. Would love to get coffee. Like dude, dumb as shit. I provide, you provide no value to them. None whatsoever. So you really think they're just going to be like, Oh yeah, dude, let's get, let's get coffee with this guy. Now it's not like that, right? You got, you got to provide value, something in exchange, right? So first guy I reached out to, he was selling some stuff. He was balling, right? This goes back to this point right here. DM people on Instagram who are balling, right? And this goes back to this principle, like don't DM Elon Musk and Joe Rogan, make sure they're people, you know, that they're feasible, and just reach out. Like if the dude runs a sales team and you tell him, hey, bro, like, what are you doing? He's going to try and recruit you. And a lot of people right now, like if, if you're just getting into this, they're going to go like ego mode. Like, oh, fuck this guy. He's trying to scam me, you know, running a, a pyramid scheme. The job you're in is a pyramid scheme. You do realize that. Like you're here, your boss makes money off you. And then his boss makes money off him. And the CEO makes money off all of you. It is literally the biggest pyramid scheme. That's fucking life, dude. Right? So DM people who are balling and reach out to them. Just be like, hey, man, love what you're up to. Mind if I ask what you're doing? You know, what do you do for work, bro? How do you make your money? Whatever it is. Then the last thing is buy courses, right? Like it was like I was saying earlier, people spend freaking tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars on school. But all of a sudden we get to a point where you stop learning. Like, dude, if I want to learn, let's say like the agency model, or I want to learn sales, I can literally buy a sales course for a dude who's been in this game for like two, three, five years and made a couple hundred K. And I can just get everything from him to expedite my process. Dude, it's like, what is an example of? It's like, uh, like on COD shit. When you're growing up, you're playing, you know, Call of Duty, and it was like double XP. It, it just expedites your process. That's what you can do. It's real life, right? So now what? You have all these steps, right? Your mindset, the action, the environment, the whole nine, the vehicle. Now what? I've been to the point where I've been like landlocked. I haven't been able, I don't have the money to move. You know, I, I can't find the right people, and I feel like I was so alone. This. Join a freaking team, dude. Plain and simple. You got to join a team and don't think it's got to be this like crazy 40K a year club. Like literally, if you apply for my club and you're actually a good fit, and you're actually serious, it's freaking free. And in three months when we start charging a couple grand, like dude, you're still going to be in this unless you get kicked out, but don't get kicked out. Right. And joining a team, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to see, hey, this guy does this. Maybe I can talk to him. It goes back to the concept of bringing yourself around the right people and learning the right things. Like, dude, I'm in the chat, too. Like, I have sympathy for the people that, you know, I used to be like. So I'll freaking help you out as long as you're a good fit. Just don't waste people's time. Right. So let's get going. Let's freaking crush the year. And like I said, people underestimate, dude how much you can turn your life around in a calendar year. People just underestimate the shit. So don't, don't be that guy who just, oh, no, dude, it's going to take like 10 years, dude. In a fucking year, you can completely change your life. So just tune out all that bullshit. I'll see you guys later.